Good morning again. What an incredible, incredible outpouring this is. It's just a great blessing to see you all. And we've had such an amazing mission week and how grateful and how amazing that we will end it sort of turning our eyes out from our incredible celebration to remember that we also look and serve our community. And what an incredible blessing. We are doubly blessed to have individuals, representatives from our area organizations, our community par partners who work with the most poor and vulnerable among us. And they are gonna share as they do every year, their incredible story of the ministry that they do every single day. I'm going to begin with a prayer. And this is a prayer that we say when we meet. Um, we've been uh, working with Catherine's Cupboard for quite some time. And some of you may know that's our food resource for our employees and our volunteers. And every time we meet, we say this prayer. And I thought it might be appropriate for today. So let us pray. Oh God, when I have food, help me to remember the hungry. When I have work, help me to remember the jobless. When I have a warm home, help me to remember the homeless. When I am without pain, help me to remember those who suffer. And remembering, help me to destroy my complacency and stir my compassion. Make me concerned enough to help by word and deed those who cry out for what we take for granted. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. Amen. Um, a reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Matthew 25, 35 through 46. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go visit you? The king will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you do for one of the least of the brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. The gospel of the Lord. Amen. This passage from the Gospel of Matthew is the basis of the works of mercy and a straightforward instruction on what we are called to do, leaving a legacy of love. During the final day of Mission Week, we are called to live out our mission by providing goods to the local nonprofits who work with individuals experiencing homelessness. This morning, we will hear about their work that each of these organizations do in the community and how this supply drive assists them in their work. Our first speaker will be Larissa Ruffin from St. John of Cath Cross Catholic Worker House. Thank you so much for having me today. Um, I am Larissa with Catholic Worker House. We're located at 1027 Fifth Avenue, Southeast, right across the street. And we serve single women, married couples, and single mothers. Um, we're serving about 100 people a year right now. And we have numerous different things that we are doing with our clients, but your donations help us so much each year. It's, it's, ironic how things like kind of run out right before so like this week we've we've not had any paper towels or or um, trash bags and we've kind of been buying our own for like the last couple of weeks so it's amazing how things stretch and work so far with the help that you guys give us each year you know and listening to what she was saying about how we're helping people and things you know in this last year we've had so many different things that have happened that have never happened in the 13 years that I've been there um, we've had 
one of our clients that was well, an older lady. Um, she passed away while she was living in the house. And that's just something that's never happened to us before. And knowing that she got to spend her final days with us and knowing that she was happy and that she was loved and she was cared for, you know, means the world to us. We're glad that we could be there for her in her final days. You know, it's those people that come across to us that where would they have been if they weren't with us? You know, I'd rather have had them be with us and be loved and, and know that we could take care of them um, as best we could. We actually had a couple of different people like that this year. Um, so it's just really a blessing to be able to be there with them each year, each day, making sure that they're getting what they need. Of course, with your assistance, um, we couldn't do it without you. We're very, very grateful for this day. So thank you very much. Thank you, Larissa. Our next speaker is Betty Daniels from Waypoint Services. I'd like to say good morning to everyone. It's good to see you and it's good to be seen uh, this morning as well. Mahatma Gandhi stated the following, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. In this week of giving, another year will soon come to a close. I am grateful to know that mercy continues to be in the service of this community and our clients. I have found that among its other benefits, giving liberates the soul and the giver, the soul of the giver. And as well as there is a deep satisfaction that one receives and a joyous one can feel and giving uplifts another individual. Mercy throughout the years, the 19 years I've been at Waypoint Services, has continued to shine a light in their willingness to share the many blessings they have received. And for that, I am truly grateful. Recently, I needed to come to the emergency room here at Mercy with a family member. I cannot express the gratitude I felt by the kindness extended to my family member. The care each doctor, nurse, insurance clerk, admission clerk, and lab tech, the time they took with my family member. Your staff was kind. You listened to all of her questions, took the time to spend with her to put her concerns at ease. I was humbled by the love and care she received, as well as the encouragement that gave my family member to continue to do well. Check in with her primary doctor, the doctor and nurse on duty, educated her about things she didn't know and I didn't know about what was happening with her. Mercy, you have truly exceeded my expectations of the love for our community, for your continued support, giving back, and the care you gave my family member. I'd like to give you some information um, in regards to some of the statistics of the service we provide. Survivors of domestic violence were supported with advocacy, 1,989 victims we supported. Phone calls we answered from the domestic violence hotline and the resource line, the support line, 7,333 victims. For single women and families with children, we provided shelter, 163 persons, 90% exited into permanent housing. We served 13,039 people individuals connected with the coordinated entry program to assess and support their housing crisis and connect them to the right resources. We served 1,354 people, individuals supported through the homeless prevention services and the rapid rehousing program, which I am a part of because I am a housing specialist. We served 465 individuals and families impacted by homicide, and violent crimes. And we served 417 children, providing 
a high quality early education and we had 32% receive financial assistance from the agencies and the contribu contributors to our agencies. Over the 19 years that I've been at Waypoint, there is no one that has not touched my life. And being in the service of others, I was recently asked, why have I stayed so long? Do I not um, get tired of hearing about other people's stories? But I was raised to believe that too much is given, much is expected. And so here I stand today. And I think Mercy Hospital represents that very, that very statement. I'm not sure who wrote the following, but I would like to share this quote with you. The best thing to do with the best things in life is to give them away. No one is useless in this world who lightens the burdens of another. No one has ever become poor by giving. We make a living by what we get. Thank you, Mercy staff, for lighting the burdens of another. Your giving is always appreciated. Thank you, Betty. Our final speaker is Deneen Rushing from Willis Dady Homeless Services. Good morning, everyone. Um, first, I'd like to start off by saying thank you so much for having us here today. Um, and so my name is Deneen Rushing. I'm with the Willis Dady Homeless Services. Uh, we are located at 1247 Fourth Avenue Southeast. Um, Willis Dady serves uh, single men. Uh, we can serve up to 25 single men in our single men's wing. Uh, we also have a veterans program, which is our GPD program, where we can serve up to 10 veterans. Uh, we also have two additional rooms where we can serve an additional four, uh, four to six single men. And downstairs is where we um, shelter our families and single women. And so uh, one thing I have to say is that over the years, uh, we have worked very closely with Mercy Hospital. Uh, I also feel like we have a lot of things in common in the work that we do on a daily basis. You know, as we work every day to serve the homeless, a lot of times we collaborate with a lot of your social workers, emergency room staff, and just your staff in general. Um, I really appreciate the collaborations that we have built and that we have done over the years because it really helps and allow, allows us to be able to do our job and serve the population that we serve on a regular basis. And so I want to um, just give a little bit of statistics uh, over the last year. Uh, so as Willis Dady provides emergency shelter, uh, in 2021, we were able to serve 277 individuals in our emergency shelter to help provide support and stability. Uh, we also served 24 individuals um, within our supportive housing programs. So Willis Dady has a few houses within the community where we're able to provide uh, permanent supportive housing. So a lot of our clients that are that start off at the shelter, they work really closely with our case managers and then we're able to transition them into permanent supportive housing. Oh, sorry, my phone locked. Just a second. <laughs> okay. Um, and so um, we also work really closely with Waypoint with the rapid rehousing program. And so we were able to serve 193 individuals within that program. That is a really wonderful program because it assists individuals um, with financial support to be able to move into um, a house or an apartment. Uh, within our street outreach program, we were able to serve 159 individuals. Actually, our street outreach director, Aaron, is here, and a lot of you may know him um, with the work that he does within the community. Uh, within our employment program, we were able to serve 130 individuals. And so our empl employment program is something that Willis Dady started, I want to say about six or seven years ago. And so what we do is we partner with other organizations to be able to hire the clients that we serve and to get them back into the work field. And so that's really, really been a very beneficial program for a lot of the clients that we serve. 
Um, and then we also uh, work really closely with other entities within the community uh, to provide uh, shelter uh, within the overflow shelter. And so I have to say, during the winter months, we collaborate even more um, with the Mercy staff, as you guys will have individuals that may come into um, the hospital uh, overnight or in the morning, just throughout the day, just cold and really looking for shelter. And so lots of times we receive those calls. And so by having the overflow shelter, which is another shelter that's open during the winter months, we're able to provide um, a safe, warm place for individuals to be. Uh, last year, we served uh, over 600 unduplicated individuals within the overflow shelter. Uh, we actually just opened a couple days ago, uh, and uh, I can definitely share that address with you guys. It's 1017 12th Avenue Southwest. And so we are open from 6 p.m. until 8 a.m. And so you, if you happen to have any individuals that stop into the hospital that are looking for shelter, you can definitely send them over and we will check them in. Um, so again, I just want to say thank you for all the amazing work that your entire staff does on a daily basis, and just really, really thanking you all for all the wonderful donations. Um, and as Betty and Larissa mentioned, these donations are, is what helps us to be able to continue to do the work that we do. You know, just knowing that we have an abundance of toilet paper and cleaning supplies and, you know, just those other necessities. I see pillows back there. That's something that we're really in need of. You know, it really, really makes a difference. And so I just want you all to know that what you're doing um, is really benefiting, ben is really benefiting um, a, a population that a lot of time is, is underserved. So thank you. Thank you all for coming and sharing your um, stories and uh, informing us about your agencies. It makes such a difference to feel a connection to what we are doing here. So thank you for sharing that. On behalf of Mercy's Mission Committee, committee, thank you to our speakers for sharing their time with us today and for the incredible work they do in serving our community. We also want to thank all of our Mercy coworkers and gen who generously supported this donation. I would also like to take the time to thank Tim Charles for his immense dedication to Mercy Medical Center over the past 20 plus years. Mr. Charles, you have also always stressed the importance of Mission Week, taking the time to reflect on why we are here and what keeps us coming back to serve our community. And for that, we thank you. In closing, I'd like to ask you to join me in reading the poem, To Be Mercy Is. To be mercy is to listen, to lend a hand, to encourage, to reach out, to absorb complaints, to comfort, to respond gently, to smile, to worry, to forgive, to speak honestly, to understand, to stand with us, to pray, to seek justice, to receive and reflect the compassion of God. Thank you all very much. We are going to try to present you with our donations. The carts are very full, which is awesome. So I don't know if we just wanna bring up one cart for each agency, but I know this means a lot to our employees to be able to present you with these gifts. So thank you very much.